Hey everybody, welcome to another edition of Grap City Interviews. You know us, I'm Will Washington. It's Philip Lindsay there. It's Righteous Reds there. But that's not why you're here. You're never here for the three of us. Not in Grap City Interviews. You're always here for our special guest. And here we have a very, very special guest. She is one of two contenders for the AEW Women's World Championship getting her shot at the title this Sunday at AEW Revolution. She is the one and only Ruby Soho. Ruby, thanks for being here. That was a great introduction. Ruby, oh, Ruby, 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 Ruby Soho. Oh, Man, yeah. we are just so blessed to have Ruby Soho on our show today. Thank How are you, you, Ruby? I'm great. I'm great. And just so you know, th that is now going to be stuck in your heads for the rest of the day. So you're welcome. It, of course. Are you kidding me? It's been stuck in my head all day preparing for this interview. Literally, so as I'm... So many people yell at me about that. So <laughs> I'm, like, I'm so stuck in my head. I'm like, you no, it's honestly, like, though, <laughs> it's too catchy for some. Good. Sometimes you have wrestling themes stuck in your head, and they're the worst. This mm -hmm. one's not the worst, so exactly. it's great. You know, no, it, it ended up being just the perfect combination mm -hmm. for you. The you ending up with that theme song, you mm -hmm. ending up with the name. Yeah. Um, and shout out Lars, who actually does host here on Fightful, hosting the Wrestling Perspective awesome. podcast. Uh, but uh, talk to us about the theme a little bit because. Yeah. I mean, you have Taz singing it on commentary on a regular basis, which is one of the <laughs> highlights. We all love it. <laughs> <laughs> Who knew back in the day in ECW when him and Bam Bam fell through the ring that this is where he would land? This, I love it. this is it. Uh, mm -hmm. I love Taz with mm -hmm. so much and that is such a constant i think it's become something that people are like almost upset about when it doesn't happen yes <laughs> like, <laughs> now, commentary for some reason somebody's like it's, we need to have to sing, sing ruby's theme music i the only thing i'm just i just i one day i don't know when it's going to be it could you know be an elevation or or dark or whatever but i'm just going to come straight to the commentary table and put down the lyrics in front of him <laughs> <laughs> this is the words for the song. Because <laughs> somehow it's it's pretty much the same. It's my name over and over and over again. Yeah. But somehow he he almost almost never gets it right. <laughs> never ever ever. I love him to death. But he'd be like, Taz, just read them. Just read the lyrics. You can sing it as much as you want. Just get the words right. He, he Did you anticipate next to him and snap too? Because he's he's never on beat. <laughs> <laughs> oh bless him. But no, he's the best. He's he's added a little bit to to the entrance music with with that um that i think people people follow along with so it's a uh, it's pretty great did you anticipate but, that it would be as as strongly over as it would be like when you like going into all out 2021 your yeah. debut in uh now arena uh, which was already a monumental night. Um, you ended up setting the tone for that being such a huge night because we saw Adam Cole debut later mm -hmm. on. We saw Brian Danielson debut, but you really helped set the tone for what that night was going to be. Did you know, basically, with all of the preparation going into that, that that theme song was going to be what it is to fans right now? So I knew how much I loved that song, mm -hmm. and I knew how excited I was to use that song. Um, I was not even remotely close to prepared, you know, you know, a few months leading into it after I had done Lars's podcast, um, that, that was, it was just going to essentially change my life, um, using the song and using the name and everything and being so overwhelmingly grateful to the band itself for allowing me to use, you know, probably, you know, one of their most popular songs that they've ever um, come out with. So I knew how catchy it was to me, um, but I wasn't sure how, uh, how it was going to be perceived um, to the crowd. Um, I had obviously done the vignettes prior to arriving at AEW. Um, and I think that song really just, pulled it all together. Like I wanted to show kind of my journey um, along from being released until I get, got to AEW. And um, I think it really just brought it all together. Um, and it really just put that exclamation point that it needed for me to arrive at AEW. Um, and then now that the fans are really starting to get the words a little bit better than Taz, <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, it's, it's really uh, becoming 
something that I just, I look forward to every week. I look forward to every time I go out there is to be able to sing with them. Um, so it's, uh, it's, it's really just made my career and, 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 you know, my journey. So, so much better. Yeah. That's honestly, I, I, I think about the fact that, um, I never thought ever I was going to see Rancid in concert at any point, <laughs> but then it turned out that double or nothing last year, Surprise! <laughs> you actually, um, what I thought was a really, really solid performance too. Like, That's honestly, cool. it's amazing. Yeah. They were yeah, amazing. They were amazing. They played it flawlessly. Like that oh. was one of my favorite live performances I've seen. And I'm, I'm not just saying this. I, I genuinely mean as far as wrestling is concerned, um, it's probably them and like living color performing cult of personality at WrestleMania. Yeah. Like yeah, really yeah, yeah. those are the two as far as uh, bands performing mm -hmm. a their hit song for a wrestler down to the ring. I thought that mm -hmm. was one of the best ones. How was it at Double or Nothing having wow. them perform it for you? Bro, it was... I tell everybody, like all of my fans, oh, I let them know from the get, um, I will never get cooler than that moment. <laughs> I in coolness there. Like it's all downhill from there. There's right. no way that my entrance or anything could ever get cooler. I might as well have just retired after that. <laughs> I, it, it was so overwhelming to me. Um, when we rehearsed it that day, uh, I came out to the ring and I did my entrance and I got on the corner and like did a pose and I looked over at them playing and I just started bawling because 13 year old me is losing her mind at how this is even fathomable that this incredible iconic band is playing me for me. They're there for me. So, cool. um, so it was like, I still get chills. Like every time I think about it, it was probably one of probably the, one of the top moments of my entire career, my life in general, it was just, and they were so cool and they were so much fun. And like, they were so rad. And like, I came to the back after I lost the match and they were in their dressing room. I went into their dressing room. They're like, come on. I was like, I'm sorry. <laughs> It's like the you curse, right, again. though? Play again for after you won. And I was like, mm -hmm. I'm sorry. Right. But it's the I gift felt, and the curse, though, right? Yeah, because I felt like, like I, I won that night anyway. Like, just yeah, you did. Having you that, won. You know? And it's so cool because they they rarely, um, as a band that's been around, you know, over, you know, 20 years, um, they rarely get to do something that they've never done before. They've done mm. it all pretty much. And so for them to be able to do something together that they haven't done before, which is, you know, play a wrestler to the ring, um, you could tell that they had so much fun and they were just, they were so great and they were so supportive. So especially, it was awesome. especially with how much Lars loves pro wrestling. Oh, like God. you just know, like the same iconic moment you were having, he was having the same yeah. thing at the same yeah. time, which is he, so he amazing so to see. He was so excited about it, and and the the continued support from him is 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 also something that I have to pinch myself on pretty often because he's just he he'll he'll you know tweet at me or about me or whatever all the time, and he'll text me to let me know that he liked a match I did or something, and it's still mind blowing that somebody I've I've looked at as, as a hero is is somebody I can call a friend. So, um, so yeah, I. He'll be there this weekend at San Francisco. You know, he's oh, I'm gonna sure. Be I'm sure. And, and, and if I don't win again, he's going to be so mad. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get into that. You're the number one contender now. You've been on a super duper hot streak since mm -hmm. you've returned from your injury that you had. Um, how have you felt returning? Um, and how does it feel to be in this position as a number one contender in a triple threat match here? Yeah. You have another little number one contender going. How do you how are you feeling coming back recently? Oh, it, it, I honestly feel the best that I've felt in a in a really long time. Like physically, mm. um, I feel a lot better. You know that uh, not only did you know that three months that I was off, you know, helped me heal from you know breaking my nose, but. I think it helped me heal the rest of my body too. Um, I think when I when I first got here, uh, my body went into a little bit of shock <laughs> because uh, I was having matches that were a lot longer than the ones that I was having previously against uh, a lot. I think uh, grittier and hungrier girls that are mm -hmm. you know newer and that are out to prove themselves. So I'm having longer matches, harder hitting matches. Um, more high risk matches than I, I ever had 
before. And so I think my body was like, <laughs> you're too old for this. Old for this. <laughs> um, so I think that three months definitely helped me do a reset on everything and, and just really focus on healing every part of like my back, my neck, everything that like was like just, you know, little injuries that were bothering me. Um, and so physically I feel the best that I felt in a while and, and, and I'm in a great headspace as far as like, um, what I need to do, um, to see the success that I want to see in my career. Um, and obviously I'm in the exact position that I wanted to be in when I came back is, is to be in contention for the title. Um, so everything's going as planned except for this stupid you know being in the middle thing of this these cat fights <laughs> that continuously follow me around again too old for it um so uh other than that not exactly on the the plan but mm -hmm. um but you know i i feel like my momentum leaving leading into this pay-per-view um is is at the best that i have been in any of our, uh, the other title contentions i've been in so i'm uh i'm very much looking forward to it you are kind of in the middle of like this cat fight between the outsiders and the originals. Um, mm -hmm. And people are kind of trying to figure out where do you fall in this? Cause you're mm -hmm. not quite an original cause you're not an AEW original, even right. though I feel like AEW is your <laughs> home yeah. mm -hmm. and you're not quite an outsider either. So where do you really fit? Um, I have kind of told a lot of people that like, they, I don't even know how I ended up here, guys. I don't know how I ended up in the middle. I feel like I was just in the wrong place at the wrong time a bunch of times where at, like I was just in them. I'm just trying to come to work and I'm trying to win matches and I'm trying to go home. That's all I do. I just mind my business. I do what I need to do and I go because I'm, again, too old for it. Uh, but now I'm in this position where I'm being pulled in both directions and I don't really want to go either i i just i if i had to choose a side i'm choosing my side that's what that's the side i'm choosing um because at the end of the day that's all i can depend on is me um and and if i'm winning the title I, i'm winning the title not a, a group i did the group thing before i did it hmm. for four years it's the best for, some of the best times in my entire life i ain't doing mm -hmm. it again i'm over it I just, I'm, I'm choosing my side. I'm choosing me and I'm the only person I can depend on to make sure I take home that gold. So as far as the cat fight crap that keeps happening, I just, I just, I would love for it to just stop, but I don't know <laughs> how to run away from it and still run towards the gold. I feel like it's just something I got to maneuver through in order to get to where I want to be. Um, but yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's been an ordeal. You know, I was going to say, because it is at least a little bit of a an interesting, almost dreamlike scenario for a lot of people. Yeah. Because when you think about the fact that uh, back in late, I think it was 2017, was mm -hmm. it? That, yeah, um, okay, so you had, of course, debuted um, mm -hmm. the Riot Squad, but right mm -hmm. around that same time, over on right. the other brand, uh, Absolution debuted. And yep. that was always kind of seen as a really like mm -hmm. kind of doing this at the same time mirroring um, each other a little bit yeah yeah mirroring each other quite a bit mm -hmm. and so uh one of the things that uh ended up happening was you know you being the leader of this group over here mm -hmm. and then uh Soraya being seen as the leader of this group you kind of were seen as equivalents and then even mm -hmm. when they did the um what did they call it at the time the superstar shakeup, they swapped the two factions yes. and so you guys like never really got to uh, face off in that way. And mm -hmm. here we are now coming up on Revolution and all of a sudden here we have Soraya entering the ring with mm -hmm. Ruby Soho. You happen yeah. to have Jamie Hayter, the women's world champion in the middle here, but mm -hmm. for a lot of people, this is a little bit of a dream scenario. How, yeah. how does that feel as far as that's concerned? Um, so I, I definitely, I've, I've always been a fan of Soraya. Um, I've always, um, I've always looked at her as someone who kind of paved the way for a woman like me to be accepted um, in the wrestling industry. Uh, I feel like, you know, alternative women by, with people like her and Lita, um, if it wasn't for them, that I would not have been as accepted as I have been, you know, over the, over the last few years. So um, I definitely have monumental amounts of respect for her. Um, and I, I have obviously when my hair was longer and it was black um, because, you know, 
women can only be seen as similar by the color and length of their hair. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> I was compared to her a lot um, throughout uh, my, my early days in my career. Um, and while that was, you know, an honor to be compared to somebody with the talent caliber of her, um, I was definitely out to show that I was different um, and that we are two very different competitors. And I think um, one of the reasons that that is also, uh, you know, a dream scenario for people is to see how different we really are. And the one way you can prove that is to step into a ring together. So I'm, I'm excited myself to see exactly um, how that interaction um, takes place. But um, I'm also, you know, excited to step into the ring with somebody I've had a lot of respect for for a really long time. Going to be great. Um, Ruby Soho is actually the perfect person here because I've been wanting to get into a topic of discussion that tears the timeline all the way down all the time. And it's about blood. Oh yeah, I said it. Oh my God, I said it out loud. <laughs> Specifically, blood oh, no. and women's wrestling. I'm and just anyone, a woman, I can't hear that word. <laughs> and if anyone knows about blood and women's wrestling, that would be Miss Ruby Soho. Yes. Ruby, <laughs> we saw you have a Muda-like level one. <laughs> <laughs> very recently very awesome job all everybody involved in that match on this matter how do you feel because there's a certain section of fans that feel like women shouldn't do that it's gross mm -hmm. stay away from this why would they ever it affects mm -hmm. blah 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 how do you feel about this situation all right uh, let me just mm -hmm. oh, okay <laughs> buckle up for this one mm -hmm. so i was when after that match um, aired, the reaction to it was was very interesting to me. Um, and at first, I didn't know how I felt about it, but as time went on, I realized that this is a conversation that needs to be had mm -hmm. because if blood is in general is just not your thing, totally get it. I completely understand that. That's okay. That's why wrestling is this beautiful melting pot of things is because there's something out there for everybody. But if the fact that I'm a woman and I'm bleeding is the thing that bothers you, but you're cool with like Mox and MJF and, and whoever bleeding, but it's just because I'm doing it is the, th the thing you have a problem with, then it's a different conversation because at the end of the day, obviously all we want as women's wrestlers is to be treated equally, to be treated the same. So I think that it was a very in, important conversation to be had because there was arguments on both sides. And, and to me, I feel like it's straying away from the one thing that we are trying to get away from is the reason that there is women's wrestling is to give you something to look at. When in reality, like, obviously, if I'm covered in blood, I'm probably less attractive <laughs> to most people. And if that's your problem, then sorry to tell you, then I'm just going to keep getting more unattractive because my, my lipstick's all over my face all the time. My hair looks like I got electrocuted constantly when I'm <laughs> wrestling. Like, that's not what I'm out there for is to be attractive to you. Right. So if that is what you're watching me for, then stop watching me. Um. You know, there's a lot of other colorful words that I could use. Um, but at the end of the day, you know, if, if you've got a problem with it, don't watch it. But this is, to me, another example of us being treated equally um, in, in the vein of, of wrestling and in and, and women's wrestling is to be treated the same, to have the same expectations um, as the guys and to be able to do everything that the guys are doing, including, you know, looking like Carrie. <laughs> <laughs> well and honestly i i was a big fan of that main event just honestly i you know we've had will nightingale on the show and we've sunk her praises to her face but um i and honestly just the combination of you two um was something that at that point in time i was really getting into just the mm -hmm. idea of um it almost reminded me of um of Wednesday and Edie for people who haven't seen um, Wednesday yet. It, it very much yeah. reminded me of that dynamic between yeah. those two characters. Um, do, do you see more for that tandem of you and Willow Nightingale? Um, or how has that gone for you? 
Uh, I'm absolutely open to it. She was, she was an amazing, amazing partner. And she taught me a lot and she helped me a lot and she supported me a lot. And I just overall just love her as a person. Um, she, she brought out uh, an enjoyment of wrestling that I haven't had in a very long time. I go out there and, and my matches a lot of times and I'm obviously I'm singing my song, I'm jamming out, I'm having a good time. But um, sometimes I forget to really just enjoy this wild ride that I'm on and that I've been on for a long time. Um, she forces me to just enjoy it. Cause like, I, I, even when I'm trying to be serious, I can't not look at her and smile. <laughs> like it's frustrating. <laughs> She's just so cute. I can't stand it. But, um, and anytime I try to take anything too seriously, she's always the person that brings me back down um, to just realizing that I we do have the coolest job in the world and uh, to be able to really enjoy it. So I am absolutely in any any circumstance, any way, shape or form that that girl ever needs me. I am there. And if that is in a, a tag capacity or just as as a human being, I'm, I'm there for her because she has just brought such a wonderful light to my life um, and is just such a beautiful person inside and out and so unbelievably talented that I'm, you know, I'm here for her no matter what. How has it never come up, by the way, that she is a tattoo artist? You seem to like tattoos, just a hunch. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> I, got so, I got a couple. How has that <laughs> never come up? I don't know. I have no idea. I don't know that... I don't know. I don't know that it's very well known that that she that she's a tattoo artist. I don't think that a lot of people know that about her. I don't think that she also gives the uh, the tattoo artist. Um, uh, Maybe not. Yeah, I don't. Yeah. I don't think that she gives that off very often. Um, but it's also interesting because a lot of people will look at me and think that I'm a tattoo artist. And every time right. somebody asks me that, I'm like, No, I just have a lot of really talented friends, mm -hmm. and I'm just <laughs> like, I'm just that's that's. I don't. I couldn't. I can't draw a save my life. So <laughs> nobody wants me to pick up a needle and come anywhere near them if I'm being honest. So, but. Yeah, I don't. I don't know. I don't know. I I would love. I would love it if she. If I I would get worked on by her in a heartbeat. Whatever you want to do, I I wouldn't even let her tell me what she was doing. I would just have her do it. That's a friend. I would yeah. Be. Well, I mean, at this point, I'm covered. Like, <laughs> once you get to the level of covered that I'm I, that I am at this point, it becomes a lot less. Like the significance of your tattoo becomes a lot less. <laughs> like you just kind of just whatever you want to do. I don't care. <laughs> So talking about the idea of uh, wanting the equivalence of what the men get in professional mm -hmm. wrestling, one of the things that's really sought after as far as uh, AEW's women's division is considered is both time and, and placement. And mm -hmm. um, when you think about the, the main events that women have had in AEW, um, there's really two names that come to mind when it comes to mm -hmm. AEW main events, and that is Britt Baker and Ruby Soho. You've actually had some pretty significant main events. Mm -hmm. uh, you've got you, your first one-on-one uh, -on -one match in AEW was the main event of Dynamite mm -hmm. Grand Slam. Um, you had a main event against Chris Statlander uh, in Las Vegas going into um, Double or Nothing, which was one where... I, had you anticipated the crowd for that one, by the way? No. <laughs> Not even close. <laughs> that is... <laughs> <laughs> that is something I will never forget. Like I understand, I I I, I even just said this to the fans. Like I I I understood because I love Chris Statlander. Mm -hmm. I'm a fan of Chris Statlander, so I understand. If I was a fan, I would be rooting also for Chris Statlander. However, <laughs> the fact that I couldn't speak, <laughs> I was like, yo, I get, I don't know what you want me to do here. It's already done. Like, what? Like, can I? No, I can't talk. It was absolutely insane. The level of like, where I was like, I, I felt like I was like, I was just trying to, I was trying to talk to a friend who was like crying and couldn't stop crying. And I was like, I'm sorry. I'm like, listen, it's okay. <laughs> We're going to get through this, guys. We're going to get through this. Like, I, I didn't know. I was, I just, 
I was in such shock. Like, and obviously going into Double or Nothing later on, thank God I had Rancid because I was like, mm -hmm. I don't know if it's just maybe Vegas just hates me. <laughs> maybe <laughs> Vegas just doesn't like. I was like, really hope that Rancid can save me in the vein of like act the actual pay per view because I I'm I might get booed out of the building before I even get there <laughs> if I'm being honest. So it was yeah, that was a that was a thing. Woo. Well, I mean. <laughs> That interestingly goes into the story of this match because I feel like some fans picked who they decided was mm -hmm. the AEW original yeah. in Statlander and they picked you as like the outsider, even though they've responded really well to you since you've gotten there. So yeah. I don't know if that was kind of like the building block for this storyline, but it mm -hmm. seems close. I've I've heard rumors that it was, um, uh, but I'm not 100% sure. I, I think obviously I think that this was this divide was probably a long time coming like it was gonna mm -hmm. happen regardless because of how many um people that have obviously come from somewhere else uh coming into the company i think that it was it was inevitable um because that you know after a while you know the the homegrowns are like we built this place and you know the outsiders are like we came here to try and make this place better um so i think that there was there's an argument on both sides so i think that this was kind of inevitable it just kind of I was fortunate enough to be stuck in the middle for when it came to fruition. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I guess finishing out that thought, no, yeah, yeah, like yeah. I completely got sidetracked yeah, no, on, they, on the fact that you, right, yeah, but at, at the same time, you know, that's exactly um, how this has gone for you, where you have mm -hmm. had a lot of, um, and it almost has gone a little bit under the radar that you have mm -hmm. had some monumental main event moments as far as the women's mm -hmm. division is concerned. You just recently had a main event um, mm -hmm. where you came out victorious uh, in a triple threat situation, mm -hmm. um, or I guess three way is how we're supposed to say that AEW wise, yeah. but uh, so in, <laughs> in the, the in the three way situation. So how's it felt getting those those spots, getting those main event um, scenarios, and how do you handle that? Um, do, how is the pressure as far as that's concerned? <laughs> It's, I think for all of us as, as women, whenever we're handed something, or I guess not handed, but whenever we're getting an op given an opportunity, mm -hmm. um, the pressure is so much more for us to absolutely knock it out of the park. Um, because the moment that we don't, we don't know when we're going to see that opportunity again. You know, it's not one of those things where it's like, oh, maybe we'll try again next week or maybe we'll try again in a month. Like, no, if we get this, like we have to kill it. There's no other option. Um, so those moments are scary for me because it's not just pressure for yourself. It's pressure for the entire roster. So if you don't do it and you don't pave the way and, and, and set the tone for what this can look like, then you can affect other women's opportunities, right. which is a lot to handle and so i have been so un unbelievably lucky um to be able to get as many main event spots as i've had and to be able to um work alongside with some incredibly talented women and to be able to get you know opportunities in, in tournaments that I've, I've been you know fortunate enough to be a part of um and you know i'm i'm really excited to see you know the next few steps that we take in in this division because it's 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 still fairly on the new side you know aew as a whole um the strides we've made in such a short period of time is is really amazing to me and so i'm excited to see you know in my career span how how many more women's main events can we get can we get a main event of all out like can we get to that point and i i really i really want to be able to do that can we get some women's tag titles can we get um you know a, a women's cage match like i, I want to we, we've had that but like um i, I want blood and guts all of it. Well, blood and guts, yes. blood and guts. Yes. <laughs> that's that's what i meant that's what i meant mm -hmm. but yes i, I want to see all of them i want whether or not i'm a part of them or not like i just i want to i, I want to be around for when these 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 monumental things happen for the women yeah definitely so um i think kind of like wrapping it up going into this match this weekend how will it feel if and when you get the victory this weekend representing AEW as the AEW women's champion, how will it feel for you, Ruby? So after having watched Jamie's reign thus far, um, she is has been an absolutely incredible champion without a shadow of a doubt. Like she has proved to everyone why 
they they stuck by her, why the fans were like were enamored with her for the last few months and and rooting for her and and basically screaming for everyone to pay attention to Jamie Hayter. Like she has proved it with every single match she's had. She's brought out a fight in every woman that she's had, which I think is 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 what a true champion does, is to bring out a special level of fight to show the importance of this title. So um I think that there's it, like there are gonna be some big shoes to fill mm-hmm. um in that in that instance. But I think for me, having done this for as long as I have and having gone as long as I have without holding championship gold, mm-hmm. I think I have all the ambition and all the hunger in the world to be able to be that fighting champion, to be able to represent the women in a way that all the women in the roster can be proud of. And I really genuinely, you know, would not take that honor lightly. Um, and I, you know, at the end of the day, I just love to fight people. So I think it'll just give me even more of an excuse to keep doing that. Mm -hmm. Um, and to be able to, you know, really propel this division, you know, even further, um, and, and do my best to, you know, represent it the best way I can. Ladies and gentlemen, Ruby Soho, she is going to be challenging for the AEW Women's World Championship in a three-way match against Jamie Hayter and Soraya. That's this Sunday, March 5th. San Francisco, Chase Center, we'll all be there. We'll be rooting for you. Come on, man. As mm-hmm. a Midwesterner, I am rooting for you. The pride of Indiana, a uh, fixture at Berwyn Eagles Club here in Chicago. I will be rooting for you. I love that. <laughs> Dang, you didn't tell me about that. Yeah. Oh, awesome. yeah, let's go. <laughs> but thank you so much for being here on Grab City Interviews, Ruby. And we're looking forward to seeing you in the future. Thank you, guys. I appreciate you. Peace, y'all. Peace. NordVPN.com slash Fightful makes my browsing experience better. Way better than yours if you don't use it. Why? Because I can block online trackers. I can block annoying pop-up ads and malware. I can browse safely, securely, wherever I am, even if I'm right here on all my devices. This laptop, actually this is a desktop. What, What am I saying? But this laptop right here, this phone right here, that router over there, the TV over there, all with NordVPN.com slash Fightful. You can also save on pay-per-views. Maybe you want to check out AEW without commercials. Maybe you miss the old WWE Network. Maybe you want to buy a big UFC pay-per-view with an overseas service at a much more affordable rate. NordVPN.com slash Fightful. Not only has you covered, but when you get one of their plans, you're effectively going to save yourself money. And I'm going to save you some more. Four months free on top of that deal and a 30-day money-back guarantee. NordVPN.com slash Fightful.